Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Uh, my name is George, and my co-host Nomi is not here for today's show. Um, he'll be here soon. So today we're gonna like we're gonna talk about how I came to um, to see my causal will. And um, okay, the idea is like you know, growing up. I mean, there are things that we kind of want, things that we want to happen ways we want to be, things we want to do, you know, just a lot of things that we would prefer to be a certain way. And, um, and then what happens is like, you know, you begin to realize, but wait a minute, you know, I can't be the way I want to be. I can't do all the things I want to do. And that's what happened with me as I was growing up. You know, I had these things that I wanted to do. Uh, ways I wanted to be, you know, um, goals, and yes, yeah, some, some um, were accomplished, some were achieved, but others just were not. And it seemed like regardless of what I did, what I didn't do, you know, it just seemed very evident that, um, that this, you know, certain goals just were not going to happen. And, um, and I think that's probably how I, I came to, to understand that, that, that free will is really an illusion, that basically um, we, um, you know, our, our lives are causal, our wills are causal. Um, okay, let's, let's talk about this. Um, for example, right now, like, well, we're going to do another show um, where I, I go into this in real time, actually, but, but for, for now, um, let's just talk about um, my past, my past, um, doing this show, okay, doing this show, um, it's not something that I would have planned, let's say, three years ago, four years ago. Um, before that, it was completely out of the radar, you know, and, and so, like, what, what led to, 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 um, to doing this show? Well, it was a series of like events, a series of situations. First, I um, I um, had some friends. I had some friends, um, you know, years ago, and we did a cable TV show on spiritual and psychological issues, and it was a lot of fun. So, um, so I decided, well, all right, well, that ended after 30 episodes. I decided to do a show on happiness. So I did that for three years, and so like you know, between those two shows. Um, there was experience, you know, in doing this. But the thing is that um, the conditions, the conditions that set up this, um, you know, this show here, what I'm doing now, you know, what, what I'm doing in the present, were not up to me. <laughs> That's the thing. In other words, like, you know, the two friends that I um, did the first show with, um, I don't remember. I, I think one of them I met at a, at a dance, you know, a singles dance at, um, nearby. And the other one I met through other circumstances. But, you know, it's like these things that I, that I didn't have control of kind of like shaped my reality, shaped my world that ultimately led to my doing this. And that's, you know, that's, that's how you come to understand that, that free will is an illusion. Um, think about it, think about it with people that, that you're close to, that, that you love, people you care about. Um, you know, I, I, in, in my life, I, I came to, to realize that, well, wait a minute, um, we, we want our relationships, our lives to go as pleasantly and as good as possible, okay? Now, if we had a free will, our lives would, would go that way, at least in terms of what we say, you know, to each other and, and how we feel about each other. You know, if we had a free will, we would be completely good and completely happy, incidentally, also. Um, but that's the thing. That's the thing. You know, you, you quickly come to realize that, well, wait a minute. Um, I can't be the way I want to, to, um, to everyone that I would like. You know, if, if, if I truly had a free will, I would, be, I would be like, you know, a perfect angel all the time. I would, I would know, always know what to say. Um, I would just like, you know, 
I would have just very positive feelings toward everyone, toward everything, you know. And that's probably, you know, that's one of the strongest indications, I guess, in my life that, that you know, of, of having realized that, no, we don't have free wills. That the free will is an illusion that, you know, again, if, and I want, you know, I want to stop talking about myself because this is really about all of us. I mean, this, you know, I'm trying to explain to you how I came to this understanding, but, you know, I want it to relate to all of us because, you know, we're, we're all in the, in the same situation. We're born into this world that, um, you know, we are given the, <laughs> the causal past, you know, and, and we're getting into this on, on different other shows. We're not going to get into it on this show. The causal past is what, um, what makes things happen. You know, it's cause and effect, cause and effect, you know. Um, what happens in one time causes what happens in the next time. What happens the next time causes what happens in the time after that on into the future. And if you notice, that causal chain goes back to before we were born. All right, so the idea is that um, this causal chain is what actually, very ironically, very curiously, um, leads us to believe that we have a free will. I mean, it's the strangest thing. I mean, because like, there, I mean, we're accustomed to illusions. There are various illusions that the nature um, has us perceive. For example, for example, I mean, like years ago, um, many years ago, we all, you know, were pretty convinced that the Earth was flat. You know, and there's that, that you know. There couldn't be, it couldn't be round, you know, it couldn't be an orb like we know it is now because, um, because, you know, the people on the bottom would fall off. You know? <laughs> it's very simple. So, you know, ultimately we learned that gravity um, is what keeps us stuck to the earth. And then, you know, then the idea that, that it wasn't a flat earth, that it's really an orb, made a bit more sense. Okay. Um, We've got another illusion. You know, Mother Nature loves to play tricks on us. Um, another illusion is that our world, this planet Earth, is completely um, motionless. You know, that it's, I mean, like, I don't feel anything moving, you know, I mean, everything is still. And I, I'm not sure I can explain the, the entire physics of this, but the reality is that we're hurtling through space at 600 and 60,000 miles per hour, at least around the sun, as we re revol revolve around the sun. And it goes even beyond that, because like the, the sun, the whole solar system, the whole galaxy is, is traveling through space, you know, at who knows how, what speed. But um, the point is that, yes, there are illusions. Uh, Mother Nature loves to play tricks on us. Um, everybody's familiar with the, the mirage illusion, right? You're looking, driving on a straight highway, you look into the distance, and you could swear there's water there. It seems all shimmery and, and you know. So anyway, so the idea is that um, for some reason, the causal past, and you, can, you could describe the causal past as God, um, if you'd like, you know, within a religious context, the causal past, for some reason, had determined that we would all believe that we are the masters of our fate, that we could just do whatever we want and say whatever we want, and um, and it's just such a it's such a an irony, it's such a paradox that um, that reality, you know, objective causal reality would uh, compel us to, um, to see life through this lens of an illusion, to, to believe that we really have a free will when, when again, the, um, and, you know, we're going to do a lot of shows on this. Believe me, this, you know, this may not make complete sense to you right now, but as we go through all the shows, you're going to come to understand that free will is, in fact, an illusion, that it has to be an illusion, that there's no other way this world could work except it being an illusion. So, so the idea is, yeah, the, the causal past gets us to, um, to believe this, um, to see reality this way. And all right, so now, now, like, you know, let's bring it back to the present. You know, like, so basically over the years, you know, not being able to be the kind of person I wanted to be, not, you know, and, and I would see that in other people also, just not being able to do whatever I wanted to do 
got me to understand that, um, that we don't have a free will. Free will is an illusion. And now, um, it seems like the causal past, um, what really controls everything, is determining that it's time for not just me and a few other people who have um, explored this in detail and depth to understand this reality. You know, the causal past has now determined that, well, you know, who knows how long it'll take, and I'm really just guessing whether it'll happen or not. But, um, but evidence is mounting. It seems that we are in a period, in an age, where all of humanity is coming to understand that free will is an illusion. Okay? And that's, that's a, a very powerful, powerful understanding um, because it changes the whole nature of everything. And again, we're going to do shows on this. Um, but again, I want to I wanna stay with this theme of how I came to, how, how we, how we can come to understand that, um, that free will is an illusion. Um, let's go to happiness. Okay. Um, we're hardwired biologically to seek pleasure and avoid pain. That's who we are. That's what we do. Um, I think all other organisms share this with us in general. Now, there's other imperatives, okay? This is like the hedonic imperative. We, we seek pleasure, we avoid pain. There's also a mor moral imperative. We tend to do what's, what we consider right at the time. In hindsight, it may not always be right, but we have this compulsion to do what we think is most right, makes the most sense, or the, the, the greater of, of two goods, the, the lesser of two evils, whatever. We're always like trying to, um, to do things as good as possible, to be as good as possible. And then this is related actually to the hedonic imperative because like when we're good, we, um, we create happiness. And this is it. So, so think about this. Where, where's the camera? <laughs> okay, think about this. Um, we, um, we're hardwired. We can't but seek pleasure, okay, and avoid pain. So we're, when we're in a circumstance, all right, and we're given a choice between two options, you know, what to eat, uh, what movie to see, what friends to be with, what to do, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we're always going to choose the one that we believe is going to bring, actually, it's going to be um, the greatest pleasure to us, but it's not just about us. It's about other people also. So sometimes it's the greatest good for the greatest number. You know, that, that might be a, um, a fairer way to... Um, to describe that. So, and, and we can't avoid that. You know, we are programmed to always do what we think is going to make us happy. Now, here's, here's another irony of nature. Um, you know, just as we're compelled to, to see le um, life through this illusion of free will, at least most of us, and, you know, we're awakening to the reality now, we're also compelled to... Um, to just to wanna to wanna feel certain ways, um, you know, to wanna to 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 be good, to to do good, to um, to be happy, to to achieve goals. This all this stuff is is compelled, <laughs> and I'm losing my train of thought. Perfect example. This is for another show. This is for another show. If I had a free will, okay, um, my presentations would be completely organized because I could go through them in my mind and decide exactly what I wanted to say at, at any moment. Um, and, but the reality is I can't. I can't. We can't. Um, how else? I'm, how did, this is a very, again, this, it's going to take shows. It's going to take um, who knows how many shows for you to really appreciate the, um, this, you know, that, that free will is an illusion and, and the, the, um, the nature of causality, the nature of the causality that, um, that really governs everything. But, but again, for this, for this episode, I'm going to um, try to, to convey just like how you can come to see it in your own life. Okay, let's, let's go with a story. Um, two friends of mine, they're, um, they kind of, 
you know, they, they had a falling out, you know, and they, um, you know, they're good friends, but they're not talking to each other for months. So I'm talking t with one of them and, um, and she's saying to me, well, you know, this other person acts in a certain way and does this and it frustrates me and I can't take it anymore. Okay. And so, so I'm asking her, well, all right, fine. Fine, but why does this person act this way? Why, you know, what's causing this person to, to act in whatever way is so upsetting? And I'm, we're not going to get into the details. You know, we can just like fill in the blanks in that sense. But, and then, you know, so like we have a back and forth dialogue. And, and I keep asking why. And, you know, she might say, well, that's because the way, that's the way she is. You know, that's just the way she is. And then I ask, well, why is she that way? Why is she that way? And um, my friend um, would, would, ultimately, she finally came to realize, well, it's because her parents raised her in a certain way. It's because she was raised in a certain environment. It's because she had a certain genetic predisposition. Okay, you have to remember that, like, our personalities are 50% genetic. So, like, if, if our genetics aren't determining how we perceive the world and, you know, our basic character and personality, then it's our upbringing, our environment. And so it's clear to see, it's easy to see in that sense, how if our parents raised us a certain way and we were, you know, taught in certain schools, we met certain people, um, we were, you know, certain, certain environmental influences molded who we are, then you know, then we can see the no, that's not free will, that's compulsion. And, and ultimately, this, this friend of mine came to see that. She came to see, well, yeah, her friend had to be the way she was. She couldn't, um, couldn't help it at all. Uh, you know, it's all, it's all about the causal past. Um, okay. So, um, so that's the reality, and you know, it's it's not a um, it's not a pleasant reality for some people, because you know that that just means oh geez, if if we don't have a free will, that means we're just robots, we're just puppets, we're just automatons, you know, and um, yeah, all right, okay, <laughs> that's the reality, that's the reality. And I've understood this for years, you know, you get accustomed to it. And um, one way you can kind of um, make sense of it is like, let's say you believe in God, okay? 90% uh, of Americans do. I do. I, I, I happen to equate God with the universe. You know, if God is everywhere and God is everything, um, then God is the universe. But, um, and I, I tend to ascribe to God, perhaps, <laughs> not, not perhaps, uh, well, I don't know more wisdom or more understanding than I, than I would have as an individual. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense, right? I mean, I, I don't understand why God would have created evil and pain, because to me, that's like, you know, why would you do that? Maybe he was compelled, or she, <laughs> she, he. But, um, but the reality is that, um, yeah, so if, if you're not comfortable with, with um, the reality that um, that our wills um, are causal. That you know that that it's God. You know who has the only pa um, power, of, or it's the causal past that's, that's determining everything that happens today. Um, you know you um, you can better understand it. If you can appreciate that God is wiser, that God is you know has more information, then you can say to yourself, all right, it's probably better probably better for all concerned that reality is causal because we as as, um, as very limited human beings, you know, if, if our choices were left up to us, we'd probably make um, less good choices. Um, I would think this, again, this, this, this issue is so all-encompassing, so essential, so fundamental to our reality that you have to think about it. You have to think, well, you know, what is it going to mean? What does it mean to, um, to shift from a, a free will perspective to a causal will perspective? And we'll get into that in other shows. All right. So how else did I come to, um, 
to realize, to discover that free will is an illusion. Okay. Um, well, one is like through basic education. Um, I, uh, I've read a lot of psychology. I've taken a lot of psychology courses. And one thing you learn in psychology is that we all have an unconscious. I mean, Freud understood this. We understand this now. And, and, um, and here's the thing about the unconscious. It is always awake. In other words, like our consciousness will go to sleep. We'll go to sleep and we won't remember what's happening while we're asleep. But our unconscious at the time of our sleeping and our waking time, it's always working. Okay, it's always active. It's always kind of like influencing our reality. Now, okay, there's been evidence since the time of, of the discovery of hypnosis that um, a person's unconscious can control or decide one's thoughts um, even though the consciousness, even though one thinks one's making a choice, you know, um, under hypnosis and now through neurobiology, we've um, discovered that, um, that, yeah, even though we think we're making choices, it's actually the unconscious that's making those choices. And um, when you realize that, when you realize that you've got an unconscious that is working full time, and think about this, if, if the unconscious is working full time, it's a part of every decision you make, because otherwise, why would it be there? It's feeding you. Basically, your unconscious is your, your memory store, your store of feelings, your store of experiences. I mean, that's where everything is stored. And you're not aware of it all because you couldn't be, but, but it's in there within your unconscious. And think about this, because this is how, you know, it, um, it made sense to me. If, if your unconscious never sleeps, and is, um, as, and is a part of every decision you make. Sometimes it, it's making the complete decision for you, and the, and the conscious mind has nothing to do with it. Again, we'll go that, um, over that uh, in more detail in other shows. If that's the case, then that's a very clear way to understand that free will is an illusion. Because we can't control our unconscious. That's the thing. You know, our unconscious, I mean, by definition, we're not conscious of it. You know, it's, it's operating behind the scenes. And so naturally, when we say free will, when we f say, you know, that we have a free will, we're basically we're saying that, that, that our decisions, that everything we decide is up to us, you know, that we can consciously decide what we do or not. But again, if the unconscious is like a part of every decision and we don't know what the unconscious is doing, then, then the best we're left with is that it's a a consciousness unconsciousness collaboration on every decision and if that's the case and we can't control our unconscious you can understand how free will is an illusion we don't have a free will <laughs> all right um, so how else um, we've got about three and a half minutes left um, we can't be as happy as we want to be we can't be as good as we want to be um, you know, we've got this unconscious happening. Um, all right, here's another cool thing. Okay, <laughs> five seconds from now, I have no idea what I'm going to say. I mean, I might have somewhat, I really don't. I really don't. And then, these thoughts, like what I'm saying right now, these thoughts are just popping into my head. You know, I have a basic understanding of what I want to do, but I purposely didn't over prepare the show because I wanted to demonstrate this. I wanted to demonstrate how these thoughts are coming to my mind from who knows where, you know, and um, and naturally there was a result of, of my having researched this topic, having thought about it a lot, having talked about it a lot, having understood that free will is an illusion. All these things are a part of, of what's, you know, causing me to say what I say, but from a moment to moment, um, um, perspective, you know, this, you know, these thoughts are just coming to me. You know, again, 30 seconds from now, I have no idea what I'll be saying. But, you know, the thoughts come to us, and that, that's another way to, to understand um, how free will is an illusion. Okay, um, so, all right, we've got about two minutes left, and 
Let's see. I got to. The idea is okay. I just I have to make a. You know, I want to end with a very positive point. Giving up the illusion of free will doesn't actually make life worse or less meaningful. It actually makes it better. Because when we give up the illusion of free will, when other people do wrong, we don't blame them. We don't say, oh, you're a bad person. You did wrong. You did wrong. We, we understand that, that they were compelled to do wrong, and we're more understanding toward them. We're more forgiving, more compassionate. When we do wrong, where the <laughs> when we do wrong, when we look at the wrong camera, we don't blame ourselves because the damn light's not on. <laughs> but, no, I can't see it. But, but really, when, when we do wrong, we don't pl blame ourselves because, yeah, because we're, you know, our wills is, are as causal and compelled as anyone else's. Um, when, um, so, yeah, so we don't feel guilty. When, when others um, do something really great, you know, sometimes we might have a tendency to, to feel envious. So we, we wouldn't, you know, because like we would know that that was compelled. We're running out of time here. And so anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this um, episode of Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Um, I'm going to do a few other episodes on my own um, because my co-host, you know, couldn't make it here. Uh, because he doesn't have a free will, if he had a free will, he would absolutely be here because, you know, and he's going to be a great part of the show, know me. So anyway, um, that's it for, for tonight's show. We're going to... Um, we're going to, I'm telling you, this, this is world changing, okay? Once you understand that we don't have a causal will, it will be a brand new world, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>